welcome to Cooking with OTK. This mm -hmm. is our Thanksgiving special. That's right. We're out at Tyler State Park. Yes, we are. And it's our first day. Sun's going down. We just mm -hmm. got the camp set up. And we thought we'd give you guys a little tour. So, yeah. so come along with us. Yeah, we're going to hike just a little bit. But then we're going to come up to our awesome campsite. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're on one of their cool little trails around the lake, as you can see. It's a nice trail, it goes all the way around. All right. And this is where we take a little cut. Alrighty guys, we're getting close to our campsite. That's right. Almost there. All right. Well, we just walked up into the kitchen. Check it out. That's right. This is where we're going to be making our awesome Thanksgiving dinner. 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 What? <laughs> we got it all set up. Mm -hmm. You all know how we like to keep our camp kitchens. Yes. Check her out. All Thanksgiving up. Uh-huh. And you'll notice we got new pop-ups. That's right. Just for our Thanksgiving special. Got a little fire going over here. And check this out. This is our, uh, as you say, dining room. So. <laughs> it is. That's because we're having some friends come out to, to celebrate with us. So of course, we want to set it up all nice. And our little living room right next to our beautiful fire. Exactly. This is going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of great recipes for you. Mm -hmm. And you should be excited. Oh, I am. Oh, you're talking to that. <laughs> My bad. I'm excited too. So yes, well, so keep on watching the adventure as we go through mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully learn a little. Yeah, exactly. And be inspired to go out camping and uh, having your Thanksgiving outside. Mm -hmm. It's a great time of year. Well, maybe not up north, but where we are, it's beautiful. Depends on if you like winter camping. Well, this is true. I mean, so, I did Thanksgiving outside in Alaska. Yeah. So. so it's doable. Yeah. But uh, it's coming to the end of our first day. We got set up mm -hmm. and we're gonna enjoy this campfire. Yeah. And hit the hay early and uh, knock out some few things. I mean, we got a couple days before, but yeah, tomorrow we're gonna spend the time knocking out some of the stuff that we can do a day in advance and kind of show you guys what you can go ahead and get done and what maybe, you know, other things that you need to do the day of. But the more you get done, the less stressful it is and the more fun you have. Yep, the more you get done the day before, the less stress you have the day of. That's and right. you get to spend time with your family on Thanksgiving. So. And that's what it's all about. Exactly. So, and one of them, we're gonna start with our cornbread dressing. Mm hmm Just finished up a good breakfast. We hey. are getting ready for our Thanksgiving dinner. So we decided we're having a nice little Friendsgiving dinner, but there are a few things we can go ahead and do today, so it'll be a lot easier. Might as well just knock it out real quick, and it'll make everything a lot easier tomorrow. Exactly. So let's get going. So first things first, we're going to start with a really easy cornbread. We have our own cornbread recipe, but to make things easy, we're just going to use a box brand. We like Jiffy. Yeah. We like the sweeter cornbread. I know some people are opposed to sweet cornbread, but hey, we like crazy. it. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of add to it to build the flavors for our dressing. Yep. Let's just grab a bowl. And get going. You could easily do this at the house and just bring your cornbread. But we're just like, it's so simple, we're just going to do it out here. And also we are trying using our smoker yeah. as an oven. We don't have any chips in it, but we've preheated it. And so we're going to just use that as a big oven while we're out here because we plan on smoking a duck for our dinner. Yeah, so stay tuned to that. Just going to add our yeah. milk. I mean, it's pretty simple. We're just making Jiffy cornbread to yeah. start with. And then we're just going to add a couple different seasonings to get those flavors that we want. And we're following the box directions. So we're just times it by two. After we get all of our seasonings in there and our egg and our milk, we're just going to take our whisk and we're going to mix it all up. Easy, simple. And we got a grease little quarter cheese pan. If you're doing it to normal oven, it'd be 375 for like 15, 20 minutes. Just want to make sure all those spices are mixed in. Then, all right, just pour it in. 
easy. Kind of spread it out evenly, nothing too crazy. And now into the smoker that we're not smoking, we're just baking. Set the timer for about 45 minutes, and then once that's done, we'll let it cool off and we'll start building our dressing. Alrighty, guys, so we'll see you in about 45 minutes. Alright. So, the cornbread's in the oven, and uh, we're gonna get our Trinity ready. Cutting time. Just like that. Throw that away. Cut it like this. All right, so we're gonna throw our celery in first. Cause it's gonna take the longest to get to where we want. All right, now that's going. Uh, I think our cornbread is done. So Ooh. we're going to grab it out of our little oven. Wow. Turns out pretty good. That looks good, guys. All right, we're gonna let those guys cook. And then of course you always wanna clean as you go. That's right. So this is gonna take about five, 10 minutes or so. And so we're gonna keep our veggies going while that's working. I'm gonna start breaking up the cornbread. Hey, hey, that's cool. So you can just take it and dump it out. And not only is it easy to dump out, you don't have to clean your sheet pan. Well, yeah, less dishes at the campsite, the better. Yeah, I wanna give that a little taste. Yeah, try it out. Mmm. I mean, it already tastes like Thanksgiving. <laughs> it right does. There. That's awesome, I like that. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, they're pretty much done. I right, just go ahead and throw them in. Your first instinct may be just to grab your pan, but remember, it's a cast iron. So we're just gonna take this and we're gonna dump it right into the cornbread. We're gonna let that cool for a minute. Now this is cooling. We're going to take a couple hard-boiled eggs that we pre-boiled. The table's a little unlevel, so the mm. eggs keep rolling. <laughs> All right. So we got our eggs. We got about three boiled eggs that we're just going to roughly chop up in there. I love eggs in my dressing. I didn't realize that a lot of dressings don't call for boiled eggs. Go ahead and add in my broth. Just like that. Get another glove. So we're gonna add two teaspoons of rub sage. That's right. Is it that real holiday flavor? Yeah. This is that's kind of that's definitely true. I but I do love sage. Me too. I really do. All right. And, and then, then one nice. teaspoon of smoked salt and black pepper. Mmm. Give that a little smokiness, even though we did cook it in a smoker, but yeah. we didn't smoke it, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, we pretty much we always use smoked salt, yeah. so. It just adds that little bit of. Another layer that a lot of people don't do. Yeah. I guess it's kind of on the rise now. Yeah, because you can smoke salt. get it at big box stores. Yeah, and then we're gonna do a half teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, it smells good, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna do a half teaspoon thyme. Ooh. Dried thyme. Very nice. Well, see, this is pretty simple and easy. Now, got all that, we're gonna mix this all in together. You wanna crack these eggs in there and give them a little whisk. You don't have to, I just like it. Just kind of pre-beat them. Then you get the yolk and everything mixed in really yeah. well. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. It is about perfect. So one and a half cups of the chicken broth is gonna work just fine for this. And I, I just have to say real quick, that was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, luckily our pan is still pre-oiled. We're just gonna put in our stuffing or dressing, however you wanna say it. Well, we got our smoker still going, so let's just go ahead and throw it in there. And at this temperature, we'll probably do it for 45 minutes to an hour. Now in a normal oven, you do it at 350 for about 30 minutes or until it's kind of set. All right, got that bad boy in there. Close it off. All right, well, that was pretty simple. And we'll let that bake off and we'll pull it out, give it a little bit of a taste test. So we'll see you in about 45 minutes. No, they'll see us like, like that. That's true. All right, let's get to it. The timer has gone off. Mm -hmm. So that means our dressing is done. Ooh, hoo, hoo. So I'm excited. Pull it out of our makeshift oven. Take just a little bite off. Mm. Oh, that's hot. Wow, that is really good though. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I shouldn't have tasted that. Seriously, because they're gonna they get everybody's gonna come and go like, why is it halfway? Yeah, why why is there only half? Did you we, we should gotten a smaller cast iron so, so we could have put it in <laughs> to the smaller yes, one. Yes, <laughs> that's right, we should have. You gotta try it. That's really good. Yeah, if you want a simple, easy dressing, guys. This is the way to do it. A little store-bought cornbread mix. We like the Jiffy one because the sweetness really goes well with the sage. Mm -hmm. And then a simple Trinity, some bulled eggs, a little chicken stock, a couple eggs, throw it in the oven, bake it. Boom, you're Good done. To go.
it's good to go. And you can make it in your smoker. <coughs> we did today. Yeah, Whew, that's still hot. <laughs> be careful. A little gravy on top. This is gonna be amazing. Yes, it is. All right, well, we hope you give this one a try. And yeah, the recipe will be down below. It will. And uh, check it out. And remember to go to our website, outdoortestkitchen.org for more recipes. And yes, and we are working on our acorn squash pie Ooh, for tomorrow. So we're gonna go ahead and start that off. It's an easy pie. We're using acorn squash instead of pumpkin or sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. And we really found that that makes an awesome pie. But first we're gonna make our puree. So we have to cook off our acorn squash and it's really simple. So let's get started. First thing, take your acorn squash and cut it in half. There we go, get through that stem. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna mm. clean out the seeds. And you could save these and make them just like pumpkin seeds, but uh, we're just gonna toss them. So we're gonna throw in a tablespoon of butter in each of them. In each half. Just cause we wanna flavor our acorn squash while we bake them. And this, you bake it like this, you can just pull it out and have it as a side. Yeah. It's you definitely could. It's really great. And so to that, I'm just gonna take some sugar, just using a little cane sugar, but you could use brown sugar. It's really awesome. Just gonna sprinkle it over. It's a pretty day today. It is a beautiful day. And just a little bit of salt. Not too much salt, but you need a little salt to balance things out. Mm -hmm. Now, because I put the sugar, I don't want the sugar to burn over caramelized. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna tint this with foil before I throw them in. Put that in there. Like I said, we're gonna let that go for probably about 45 minutes to an hour until everything's nice and soft. And now we're gonna work on a little pie crust. And I'm just gonna make sure you weigh it down that way. Yes, I'm gonna put a parchment down in it. Red Old beans. beans. And that's just so your dough doesn't puff up and mm -hmm. you can still fit your fillings inside. All right, and then once all that is done, see, it's nice having this big oven. It is. But once we get all that done, then we'll peel out the puree and we'll start making our pie. That is the next step. All right, well, our acorn squash and pie crust is out of the oven. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get started on the rest of the pie. And yeah. the first thing is we gotta pull all those guts out of the squash. Exactly. And, say, and we also flipped them over halfway through the cooking. But I like my natural spoons. And we just need a total of two cups. See how easy that comes out? First, you gotta get our pie weights. Back in. Yes. There we go. We always use these. I know you can buy pie weights and the ceramic ones and all this, but I have found, I watched my grandma, Grandma Honey, just use the same dry beans. They just put it in a separate bag and they know mm -hmm. those are my pie weights. And technically, those are baked beans. <laughs> Third cup of just a good sugar. We're using a cane sugar. Perfect. You can use brown sugar, but I decided to use just regular sugar today. And then a teaspoon of cinnamon. And we have just a regular salt. Just mm -hmm. kind of a kosher salt. You can use a table salt. Our ground ginger. Now our quarter. See, that's why I like to organize them and step up. That's a good idea. It keeps it nice and orderly. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you guys, this, the sugar, the spices, and the, the liquid, everything but the squash. You can substitute sweet potatoes. You can substitute pumpkin. Yep. This is a great base of a pie. Two eggs and then one egg yolk. I like to use my hands. Ugh, should I put on two gloves? Nope, there it goes. I guess I'll wash my hands. All right, so we have our two eggs and our one egg yolk and basically gonna cream that. All right, we've got that going. And then to that, we're going to add a little maple. So two tablespoons of maple, maple syrup. syrup. And our little bee friend was like, ooh, that smells ooh, good. syrup. <laughs> Is that honey? No, it's maple. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Perfect. And now we're going to take two cups of our squash. That's why I still wanted the spoon. All right, it's working, okay. Just not for mashed potatoes. Yeah, mashed potatoes might have been a little too big for it, so. Yeah, that yeah, looks. There you go, that's pretty well combined. Man, look at that. That is good. I know there's raw egg, but mm, you got it, that's good. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Now we got a deep dish pie crust. And we're just gonna fill her up. And then we got our oven set to 325. And we're gonna bake this for one hour. Alrighty guys, well we'll see you in one hour. All right. 
that. Check that out, guys. Man, it smells so good, and I'm so mad. We have to wait till tomorrow before we can eat it. I know. Although, if you can see, I did take did a little. Did you taste it? <laughs> so, and it's delicious. I'm telling you what, acorn squash pie should be a huge thing. It should be a thing. We're, we're trying to make it a thing. Yes, this so. turned out beautiful, even in a store-bought crust, but the filling is what's important. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, if you try this one, you will love it. Yes, you will. Now, we're just gonna let this rest, and uh, since we're not using it till tomorrow mm -hmm. for our big Thanksgiving dinner, mm -hmm. we're gonna just let it rest. It'll kind of fall down, flatten out, level out. Yep. And we're gonna make some whipped cream in the mason jar to put on yes. top. Our so mason jar whipped cream. Super easy. Oh yes, and it'll go perfect with this pie. So just well, you know, give it a try. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, hit, hit the hit little the bell. bell. And remember, you can find our recipes at outdoortestkitchen.org. Yeah, or in the description below. Yes, you can. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> Insects. Well, it is our last day. We're loading out. We're mm -hmm. halfway packed up, but we realized we never showed you the pie. Yeah, so we we're doing a taste test. Yeah. We decided we're going to have pie for breakfast. That's right. There's nothing wrong with that. And if I left a grill out, we would have had some breakfast links with it. Yeah, exactly. So let's try this. It's our acorn squash pie. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I like it better than pumpkin and sweet potato. Yeah. That's a good pie. That's a really good pie. It's the first time I've ever had acorn squash pie. This is good. That's great. So see, yeah. you never know. Well, we're going to keep eating our pie, finish our breakfast pie. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, as y'all can see, uh, the sun is setting, but thankfully our dressing is done. Our pie is done. So we're pretty good for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But we thought, well, might as well take the time to Get a knock out of it. Yeah. A couple of little extra things done. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and blanch our sugar snap peas for our green bean casserole, even though, yes, we're using snap peas, not green beans. But we figured if we blanch them today, it'll be a heck of a lot easier and it's one less step we have to do tomorrow. Yep. And we're gonna go ahead and blanch the sweet potatoes so mm -hmm. that we can just make those smashed potatoes really fast. Yep. And right before we serve, that's the beauty of smashed potatoes because you basically take blanched ones and you're basically just heating them up by sauteing them. Exactly. So you're not trying to cook the whole potato. So that's why we have our big pot of water. We're about to start boiling, but mm -hmm. we just kind of want to let y'all know what little all the little details yeah. that really go into it and yeah, things that and can make it a lot easier for you. Yes, taking just a few steps right before the sun goes down will be perfect. Won't take me any time. Mm -hmm. And then that's one less thing tomorrow. So tomorrow can be a fun day of smoking the duck and enjoying the company. Yep. So, you know, we're taking the extra day to do a little prep. Exactly. So we're, uh, mm. we're going to get started. That's right. And next time you see us, we'll be smoking a duck. Woohoo! Welcome to Cooking with OTK. I'm about to stick my hand up a duct. What are you about to do? Good morning. Got uh, my cup of joe sitting over here. We got up early so that we can knock this out because overall cooking time, two and a half, three hours on a smoker and a minimum of an hour rest. Yeah, so we got about four hours on this duck. So we want to make sure we get this ready. So when family comes around, friends come around, mm -hmm. we're not spending four hours on it. Yeah. But our first thing was first is we were preheating our smoker to about 250 degrees. Slap your duck around and get them dry. You want to get inside and out. You don't have to like get it really dry. So now we're making our spice mix. So we've got salt, black pepper, garlic powder, clove, and ground cinnamon. And then we're going to mix that all up. That's simple. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Even though I know you're thinking cinnamon, clove, no, it really goes well in the duck and with the brandy glaze. Yeah. It's it's a really a beautiful flavor combination. So we're just gonna rub it down. Yeah. Rub a dub dub. And get inside and out. But we wanna put some gloves on. Yeah, use some gloves. We're also gonna stuff half an orange, mm -hmm. whole head of garlic, but we're just gonna cut it in half like that. Mm -hmm. And then probably half an onion. You wanna hand me a quarter of orange? Yeah. Take our orange, 
stick it up in there kind of alternating got some garlic and you can keep the paper on it's not that big of a deal and an onion you don't even have to peel the quarter of the onion there we go Bloop. easy as pie and now we're gonna simply tie this uh guy all up I'd rather have too much than too little one okay let's show them how this is done all right it's a little tail i got my just a little tie on it Boop. <laughs> Calm down, duck. And then you go one loop around the whole thing, two loops around the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, you're just basically keeping them together. And if you don't have string, you can use skewers. Awesome. And that's so when we're smoking it, it smokes nice and even. Yes, exactly. Um, next thing, we're going to get a probe. The tip of the probe is probably about right there right where this breast and kind thigh of, kind of meat. Yeah. Okay, cool. But you wanna make sure it's in the meat. Mm-hmm. So, now we gotta put this bad boy in our smoker. That's right, and that's the easy part. Yeah. On to the smoker. All right, so just gonna rest it. Oh, I wanna look at that. All right. Rest it in there, nice. And then I'm gonna grab my drippings pan. Uh huh. Because we don't want to lose any of that duck fat. Make sure you have a pan wide enough that covers everything and it'll drip. And also, you don't want that duck fat dripping down on your smoke chips or your heat element because it will flare up. And I love these little timers, probe timers, because I can set the temp that I want it mm -hmm. to go on. All righty, guys, we're back. We just got some of our rendered duck fat out. So. That's right. And so the duck is about 155 degrees. So mm -hmm. we're gonna go ahead and it's been on there for about two, a little over two hours. About two hours, yeah. So we pulled off, used our drip pan, got the duck fat that we needed and some drippings for later. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and make the glaze and start glazing it the last probably 20, 30 minutes of the cooking. And it'll give that really beautiful color and mm -hmm. add a lot of flavor. Oh yeah, so lots of flavor. That's really simple. It is, so let's get into it. First thing, so we're taking a really nice brandy. Mm -hmm. Then we need about four tablespoons of orange juice mm -hmm. but we're actually gonna zest this one yep so we need about a teaspoon which is about three quarters of this orange yeah just get some garlic we really just want to kind of crush it throw it in yeah because all we're doing is trying to get the flavors out of it we're not going to be using the garlic in the sense of no one's going to be eating it so it doesn't need to be pretty we just need the flavor mm -hmm. so we've got about three to four sprigs of fresh thyme awesome Need a tablespoon of duck fat, two tablespoons of soy, soy sauce. sauce. And why our bees love us so much as two tablespoons of honey. All right, guys, it's that time to baste our, or glaze our duck. Yep, so our duck has been in there for a minute and now it's glazing time. That's right, so careful when you open it. Look at that, it's already looking beautiful. Mm-hmm, look at that sucker <laughs> glisten. So I'm just gonna take our little glaze, just give it a nice little rub. Mm-hmm, and this is what's gonna give it that nice color. Yeah, so it's gonna add a lot of flavor to that skin. Mm-hmm. Especially as all this nice fat is rendered out. Oh. Oh yeah. If y'all could smell this. If you could smell it, you would definitely want to eat it. That's good, good. Now let it drip and also say, look at our nice dripping pans that we'll make the gravy out of later. All right guys, well, we got a little bit longer on this old duck mm -hmm. and then we'll pull it out, let it rest and then we'll then hopefully it'll be time to eat. Yeah, we'll be setting it on the buffet table and we'll be getting to go. Oh yeah, so we will see you in just a minute. Alrighty guys, well, we've got the duck in the smoker and uh, we've got a little bit of extra time before we need to finish up our other dishes. So That's we're gonna right. be setting up our buffet in our dining table. Yeah, cause you know, 
we wanted to be special. It is the holidays, so we went ahead and packed up a couple of containers, nothing mm -hmm. too crazy. So we're just gonna set it up while things are going. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what's awesome is some of these leaves are starting to change color, so it's just even better. God's nature is helping us decorate. So That's right. Making our little place settings. We got some of these little Dollar Tree place mats. I'm telling you what, Dollar Tree and I are best friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dollar Tree does have some awesome finds, that's for sure. Oh, yes. Check these guys out. Look at that. And to keep them down, we got some chargers. Yes. Just always make something nice, and when you can get a charger for a dollar, might as well use it. That's right. If you can find a deal, take that deal. Got our little candelabra. Yes, check this thing out. Isn't that cool? Our I candles. Mean, it's Thanksgiving dinner. We gotta have it special. Yes. Look, just because we're out camping doesn't mean we can't set it up for Thanksgiving. That's right. And you know what? So can you. And it doesn't have to cost a whole lot. No. It's just, like we said, we went to Dollar Tree. We, you just, we went to actually a garage sale. That's where we got this chandelier. I mean, you just get whatever you can. You don't have to spend a lot of money to have a great time. Yeah, and just kind of making it look nice. And your guests will appreciate it. And look, real time, this has taken me nothing. And the great thing about Thanksgiving fall, it's just leaves on the ground. So it's easy to decorate. <laughs> That's exactly right. And even if you're not having friends come over, your family is going to really appreciate it too. Oh, yes. So we got a little cornucopia, some little veggies. And say, so, how easy? I'm just kind of throwing stuff around. Yeah. It's really coming together, honestly. And if you're watching me do it real time. And it's taking no time. Mm-hmm. We got all of our goodies packed in this little storage bin. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna use them all, but some of the stuff we found from old Thanksgivings. It's so cool. Go. Our little, got our little scarecrow. Oops! Look at that. Yeah. There's, dun, 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 dun. Maybe take the tags off. <laughs> All right. I mean, hey. how's that look? Not bad. That's Not looking bad. good. And we also stopped by this little store and we got these cute little salt and pepper shakers. It's a cast iron and a little turkey, so we're gonna put those on there too. In the oh room. yeah, that's right. And if you really wanna make it bougie, you can get little place card holders and we'll put our people's names on it. Put their names on there and everybody knows where to sit. So yeah, so basically, boom, look how fast that was. Put the little gourds over here. And then, boom, like you said, I'll go grab those salt and pepper shakers. These guys take a little cast iron and they go, boom. <laughs> They're so cool. So I have one on this side of the table and one over here. Now, we should have just gotten four pairs and they would have been little personal salt and pepper shakers. Yeah, so, I mean, Either way, though, they're, they're still cool. Yes. All right, look at that. Look, see? No time at all what that took. Six. Less than six minutes. I mean, that was definitely less than six minutes. So put in a little effort and your guests will love it. And again, everything fits in a nice little tote. So when we're done, just put it all back in. There we go. Now, onto the buffet. Let's get the buffet going. All right, well, of course, we have a little tablecloth because no one wants a naked table. No, definitely not a naked table. That would be indecent. 
<laughs> um, oops. Make sure it's even. For the most part, I believe. Now, since they're using a actual cloth, tablecloth, and we're out camping, if we were at the house, I wouldn't, and I'd actually probably steam this, but we're gonna use this little plastic cover just to protect it because we don't have our washer and dryer out here right yeah, now. We, yeah, we won't have the ability to just wash this real quick, so. So we might as well just cover it up, and these are like $4, and it's great because the whole time we've been able to have the picnic table tablecloth on with a little plastic cover so it's easy to wipe down clean and we don't have to take it on and off even if a raccoon jumps up and walks around it's on the plastic just clean it off exactly all right and as you see we've got another tub just for our buffet that's right there's our napkins and silverware we'll need to do but basically the buffet is easy i have our serving dishes, kind of labeled. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna set them out. And I like to use other little things for risers, because you like to give a little depth up and down. It's just catering and stuff. Exactly. We just used a camping plate, just flipped it upside down, and it just adds that little extra height. Yeah. And because one of our dishes is going to be served in a cast iron, we're using one of our Dutch oven trivets. One is a heating hot pad. Got our gravy boat right there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and this will be for our dressing because it will be served hot in a cast iron. Have our cranberry, our duck gravy, salad, sweet potatoes, and what am I missing? Pie? No, oh, no, well, pie's gonna be over there. Okay. Salad, uh, green bean casserole. I was Duh. about to say, green bean casserole? Yep. So as you see, that will go right there. Bath that all there. Then we'll just take some fun little decorations, throw them around, so your table doesn't look boring. <laughs> and you're just trying to accent the food. And I like to just kind of preset things so that when our guests here, all we have to do is just, we know where everything goes, put it up, it's set up, it takes no time. Look, I'm done with the buffet. Exactly. We like to be prepared and we like to make it look cool. So. That's right. Well, since we got candles on that one, might as well put some candles on this guy. Exactly. And actually, a cool thing to tell them, if you did have an issue with a candle not wanting to stick up, mm -hmm. you can take a little lighter, warm up the bottom of it, and push it in, and it'll hold it nice for you. Exactly, that's probably what I'll do. Check it out. Get that wax nice and hot, a little drippy, down in there, hold it, let it set, there you go. There you go, that cold brass or plastic or whatever your candle holder is, will cool that wax off and it'll just hold it right where you want it to. That's right. All right, I think we're gonna have a pretty awesome Thanksgiving.
So, yes, we are. Just remember, guys, take a little bit of time to make your uh, event a little special with some little mm -hmm. decorations. And when you're camping, it's even more special because you're surrounded by the beauty. And this just adds a little cherry on top. That's exactly right. Now, back to uh, our duck to finish up everything. Alrighty, guys. We'll see you there. Duck time. Yes, indeed. The timer went off, or actually the temperature alarm went off. It's at a nice 170 degrees, so mm -hmm. we are going to pull it out and let it rest. But we want y'all to see how beautiful this duck turned out. Yeah, so let's check it out. Watch. We open it and it's like black. <laughs> that would be funny. We would leave it. Oh, shoot. Ooh. Look at that. Look at this. Oh, jeez, dude. That's like oh, picture that's... perfect. All righty, guys. Well, we're going to let this rest. All right, guys. Well, the duck has, has rested. It has rested. So we're going to get it on the platter. Uh-huh. And although we're going to carve it later, we're going to carve a little piece so we yeah. can try. We're going to do a little taste test, yeah, you know, the... as we always do. And because we want to present this to friends, you don't have to do this, but we're going to We'll make, make it the look, platter look really nice. Yeah, we'll make it look pretty. And these are the little details that are so simple to do. Got some little cranberries. Mmm. That's how simple it is. Get you a nice little platter. Wow, that looks so pretty. Uh oh, cranberry ah, down. Cranberry gone. See how simple that was? Look, yeah. it took no time. And look. Oh, um, oh, another I'm, cranberry. I'm losing <laughs> berries all over the place. But guys, most of the work for this duck was putting it in the smoker. Yeah, other than that, this thing has been easy peasy. Super easy. So Lemon squeezy. What do you think of that? Okay, as promised, I said we were gonna get to uh, have a little snack. Because we have people coming over and we want to carve it in front of them we're just gonna kind of cut a little piece down here so it doesn't destroy our nice presentation except for you don't have a scalpel yeah i know i should have grabbed a paring knife i shot this little piece go ahead oh my gosh you can i can smell the citrus <clears throat> and the smoke I don't know. wow that is juicy and amazing. I can, all of those flavors, mm. I can taste that. That's yes, crazy. That brandy and the citrus glaze mm -hmm. with that nice little salt and cinnamon and clove rub. Yeah. Dude, this is one of the best smoked birds for a holiday season yeah. you could do. That tastes like Thanksgiving. Oof. Right? And you could pretty much do the same process with a turkey, but we wanted to do something different. I know if you have a big, large family, one small duck's not going to yeah. feed you all, but you could take the same process mm -hmm. and do it to another bird. That's true. The The size of the bird only changes the time that you have to cook it. Yeah, exactly. So guys, I hope you all will give this a try. We are about to go enjoy our Thanksgiving dinner with some friends. So Today, we're making a green bean casserole. Well, our take on a green bean casserole, because yeah. we're not really using green beans. Yeah, that's true. We're not. <laughs> we're using uh, sugar snap peas. Mm -hmm. But and then we're also going to make uh, a nice kind of cream of mushroom sauce to go on top, and our little yep. crispy onions, and then mm, it'll be great. It's going to be really good. And we only got a couple hours before people show up, so. Yes, for our Thanksgiving event, so. Mm -hmm. So we're going to knock this out and then keep mm -hmm. it in the warmer and yep. it'll be perfect. So let's get right into it. All right. First things first. So we've got three tablespoons of butter and our awesome all clad. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> and so. you're going to start that getting that warm and we're just going to quarter these because we want them chunky and this is not for the sauce. We have different mushrooms for the sauce. Gotcha. This is just to add because we made kind of this sugar snap peas, onions, and mushroom as a side for that cowboy au poivre. Mm -hmm. And they're really good. And I thought, man, we'll just make the sauce to go on top of it. Yeah. And it'll be awesome. Yeah, exactly. So we got all our quartered mushrooms and we're gonna start sauteing those first. Do best. All right, getting that melted. And we had already blanched our sugar snap peas so yep. we don't we're not having to cook these we're just warming them up <laughs> 
And to our onion, we're just gonna be making little slices. But we'll put those in after our mushrooms get going. Good, we'll throw yeah, in our mushrooms. All right, well, you do that, I'm gonna go take a nap. All right. And when you're cooking mushrooms, you're gonna notice that they're gonna soak up all that butter. Yeah, but then they're gonna release all their liquid. They and are. that's what you kind of want. You wanna get rid of as much of that liquid as possible. Mm-hmm. You wanna make sure you don't overcrowd your pan when you're cooking mushrooms. That's right. Julia would be mad at you. She would. If you overcrowd your pan, Julia's gonna come from her grave <laughs> and beat you. But at the moment, oh. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. And cook these down. Mm -hmm. Good, nice. That's well, gonna take about uh, five, ten minutes. All, All right. right. Those are looking good. Yes, they All are. Right. Now it's time to throw in pre blanched snap peas. We're just gonna toss them in the pan. That's right. Ready? Yep. All right. So we got our mushrooms, and we're gonna use about almost two cups worth of chopped up mushrooms. Oh yeah, and that, that blanched water had just the right amount of salt in it. Mm -hmm. These are already perfectly seasoned. That's a good deal. We're just gonna pour these bad boys in. Give you a hand. Yeah, thank you, man. Now we can just set this aside. Mm-hmm. Add these guys in. Mm-hmm. Just like before, we kind of, they got to soak up and then release. And we exactly. kind of want to get as much of the liquid they release out of it because we're trying to make a sauce yes we're going to go ahead and add some of our spices and herbs in the a quarter teaspoon of thyme Ooh, we've got time today quarter teaspoon of garlic powder perfect oh quarter teaspoon of smoked salt oh sorry quarter teaspoon of black pepper quarter teaspoon of onion powder there we go I'm just gonna mix this in. Yeah. And we're doing a quarter cup of flour because we did a quarter cup of butter. Yep. And your roux are always one to one. One butter, one flour. All right, how's that roux? It's pretty much ready. All right, now take a half cup of our chicken stock. Get that going. Deglaze this pan. Yeah, and get that roux, make sure it's incorporated and not all. Definitely don't want a chunky sauce. And to that, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of fresh parsley. Oop. There we go. Look at that, that's coming together beautifully. So we've got our dish that we're going to serve it in with our veggie mixture. We're just pouring the sauce right over. That's it. Mmm. Look at that. Of work its way down. Yeah. Don't really need to toss it, because it's just a sauce. Oh yeah, and this sauce is thick enough where it's gonna coat everything as it goes down. Yes. Look at that. And, oh, sorry. For the most important part of our casserole, we don't want to forget our French's onions. Mm-hmm. And, just nice, good, helping sprinkling on top. Yes. Give it a little crunch. Hey. All right, we got tasters. Woohoo! Let's fork this up, man. Oh, that's mm. gonna be good. Yeah, I wanna get me some of the French the onions. Mushrooms, onions. Yes. Mmm. Oh, yeah. No, that's a green bean casserole. Yeah. That puts everybody to shame. Hmm. Don't double dip, we have guests. I know, I know. But that's so, really good. Yep. This is super good, really easy recipe. Yeah. And it will wow your guests, so. It definitely will. Let's get it in the warmer and then on the buffet. Making smashed sweet potatoes for our Thanksgiving camp out. Yes, and I love these smashed sweet potatoes. We actually did them last year for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. in uh, LaGrange, Texas. Yep, they were. With a bunch of friends. Very good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. It's kind of come with a tradition, so yeah. I guess uh, we're going to show you guys our traditional, what we do as our traditional sweet potato for Thanksgiving. Yep. So, well, first things first. We've got our sweet potatoes pre-blanched. We did that actually yesterday. Yeah, and if you were doing it the day of, you just kind of boil them for about 15, 20 minutes. 
and then pull them out of the water and then start the process. Yeah. But we went ahead and just kind of blanched them mm -hmm. before, put about two tablespoons of butter and then two tablespoons of some of that beautiful rendered off duck fat. And so I'm just gonna put them in just around the pan. All right, well, Junior is the man in the potatoes. We're gonna take a bunch of basil and we're just gonna give it a nice little rough chop. Cause we're gonna finish everything off with some fresh herbs. Just gonna peel off, I'd say, you know, probably a little bit of quarter teaspoon. Yeah. Thyme is pretty pungent and the basil just want it's a nice little accent. Mm-hmm. So there. Nice little herb bundle. Ooh. Is that a nice chop? You can use flat leaf parsley if you like. Some people I know prefer it. I am one of the few people that like the curly. Mm-hmm. It's just more fun. So we got our herbs. And this is a great recipe that you don't have to be super exact. No, not you just at all. Just kind of tailored to what you like. Yeah. We can go ahead and salt. Yeah, we can go ahead and salt the tops of them. Tops of this side. And we'll salt the other side once we're at that point. All right, guys, yeah, so just go ahead. Kind of let it go. Yep. I'm going to play musical potatoes. Yeah, sometimes you just got to move your potatoes around. Your pan could be heating up in different ways. Yeah. Like right now, we've got a little bit of cross breeze, so the pan closest to us is starting to cook a little more. Look at that. Maybe I can go for a minute longer. That's what you want. Nice little crust. Fun thing is, after this, we're gonna take the back end of our tongs and give them a little smash. Fat rotating back around. That's so why we call them smash potatoes. We're not breaking them, but, oh. Well, maybe you'll break a couple. It's better if you use a spoon, but. Yeah, or your hand. But it gets a little hot. Yeah. It's rustic. Yeah. All right. All right, guys, we just drained some of the extra fat off. Finish it all up. Drizzle over about half a cup to a cup of cream. I'm going to let that kind of bubble and reduce down a couple. Get a lot of that good cream sauce. But Make sure no one knows that we stole one. <laughs> They'll never know. Unless they watch this. Yeah. All right, I'm kind of excited about these. Yes. All right, we got our little taster. Well, that is, oh, delicious. Even the bees want it. Mm. I love the fresh herbs and the sweetness. Cause you know, so many people put marshmallows and all that, just basically mm -hmm. make it a dessert. This is a good way to complement the savory and the sweetness of the potato. Yeah, it really is. It really takes a sweet potato to a different level. Mm. Yeah, and it's so simple guys. Y'all saw how fast that was. Mm. I really want to eat more, but yeah. I guess we gotta wait, I can't get full. I wanna do it. <laughs> All right, well that's simple. We're gonna get this over to the buffet. We got one or two more things to do. Yeah. But hey, if you like this, give this recipe a try. It's really easy, it's quick, and it is a showstopper. It absolutely is. We're about to make some duck gravy mm. and a salad. We are putting the finishing touches right before all our friends get here. Yes, we are. So right now we're going to do our little harvest salad. Uh -huh. And I know we've done it, so we'll link yeah. the recipe there. But we're just going to put it together last minute. 
quick, simple, easy with some bagged lettuce. And I love this salad. We already made the dressing ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It has some craisins, some pecans, yeah. feta cheese, apple slices. It's a really good salad and it's really great for this time of year. It is. It's, it's, it's a really awesome balanced salad. So, yeah. so we're just going to get nice little fluffy greens mm -hmm. and throw in some of our craisins. Yeah. Love these things. And then we're going to wait to dress it at the very end when everybody gets right, here. Right before. Exactly. But they're getting close and... We're going to go ahead and top it. Yeah. Get everything just, just ready. And then right as everybody's showing up, we're just going to oh. drizzle some uh, vinaigrette right on top. Yeah, our nice little apple cider vinaigrette. Mm-hmm. Well, we actually used a little duck fat because we were a little low. We did. We used a little duck fat, and it was pretty. It turned out pretty awesome. Yeah, we were a little low in olive oil, so yeah, we improvised. Uh -huh. that's, that's the beauty of camping. It is. It's the beauty oh. of cooking in general. Yeah, and if you want to, we also went ahead and made up some of our cran pepper jelly that we did for uh -huh. our spooktacular. It yeah. was really good. It's super good. You can check out that video too. So I'm just going to pour this in here. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to serve it in, a little fun little maple dish. Awesome. There you go. See, it's that simple. And it's great to have a few things done ahead so that it can just be really fast and simple. Mm-hmm. There we go. And just top of a little parsley. And a few more craisins. Check it out. That's so cool. Oh, look. There. Salad is done. Oop. It's right. seriously easy as that. I mean. Yeah. And now we got, we'll got. we put our dressing out. We'll mm -hmm. toss it right at the last minute. But we're going to get this on the buffet. And what the last thing is the gravy. Yeah. Last thing is the gravy. take us about four or five minutes. And then everybody will be here. And we'll be eating. Woohoo. All right. Let's go. And our duck is pretty much rested. Everything's ready to go. So the final thing right before our guests get here, we're going to make the gravy so it's nice and piping hot. Yes, we are. And so it's going to take no time at all. And we pulled out uh, some of the garlic that was stuffed inside the duck. So it has mm -hmm. all that flavor. So we're going to really build this gravy. It should taste amazing. Oh, it's going to taste amazing. Of course, we're making it. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. The fat we rendered out of our duck. So I'm going to take two tablespoons of our fat. And there's a little drippings, but that's A-OK. -okay, because we're actually going to add some more drippings. So let's get this cranked up. <coughs> and then to that, add a sprig of rosemary and about three or four of fresh thyme. I'm going to take half an onion. This is the leftover onion from what we stuffed in the duck. And we're just going to rough chop this. All right. Now we've got our onion in. And now, just gonna, yeah, I know. These bees really want my garlic. That's why I had it covered. It's crazy. There oh. are a lot of bees around here. Yeah. They're like, yeah, because it's Thanksgiving feast. Clean Grab that myself up. a little spoon. There we go. We're just going to kind of give it that saute. Basically, you want the onions to be translucent, and you want that duck fat to pick up all the flavor of the oil, the garlic, the herbs. Mm -hmm. To help it out, to, we're going to throw in some of the duck drippings. It has a little extra fat. Awesome. Just to build on some awesome flavors. Ooh. Check this out, guys. Doesn't that look delicious? Mm. I wish there was smell of vision. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna throw in just a little bit of pepper. And just, just like a pinch. Not too much. Of uh, smoked salt. Yeah, and of pepper. Because we're gonna get a lot of the flavor from 
the broth and then mm -hmm. all the drippings. And since the duck was very well seasoned, the drippings are well seasoned, so we don't need a lot. One of the last things, and take about two tablespoons of flour. You want to grab a whisk? Yeah, that'll make this easier. a lot easier. As you see, it's already kind of thick enough. That's okay. Yeah. Well, they don't see. No, you don't. Yeah. Let it malfunction with our overhead. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to get the good chicken broth in. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and bump this temperature up. Because once we add this and get it all incorporated, we're going to want to bring it up to a simmer. Simmer it for uh, two or three minutes. And that'll get it nice and thickened. And then the last thing is we're going to put about a tablespoon of heavy cream. Just with, to kind of add that color and... And to balance it out, make it a little smoother. And then we're going to strain it into our gravy boat and using our spoon, push out all the good flavor. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have perfect gravy. So, all right. So, we'll, we'll see you going. then. All right. Just gonna basically strain our nice gravy. There we go. Then get a spoon. Just kind of mash everything. If you're not trying to mash it through, you just want to squeeze all the good flavor out that you can. Mm-hmm. And just take a spoon and just make sure. Oh, oh, oh. You sting me again, mother! I'll kill you. All right, the bee wants some gravy too. We got everything all mashed out. Oh, look at that! Nice, pretty, smooth. I'm telling you what, that is going to go perfect on the duck, on the dressing. Mm -hmm. You can drink this stuff. You, <laughs> no kidding, dude. You really could drink this. Oh. But yes, now we're going to get over there and then we're going to start our Thanksgiving feast. Comment, let us know what you think. If you tried this recipe, you got to let us know Definitely. what you thought. And I recommend giving it a try, especially not just for Thanksgiving, but anytime. It's a great, simple gravy. And good morning. Well, we're at the end of our Thanksgiving camp out. It was great. We had a lot of fun, took some mm -hmm. really cool dishes. I hope you guys give it all a try. I mean, we're having pie for breakfast, so can't beat that. Definitely cannot beat that. <laughs> so we're going to finish loading up and get out of here. But hey, just remember, guys, uh, man, take some time. Enjoy yourself. Don't worry about the uh, I'm camping. I can't do the Thanksgiving. Yeah, you can. You can have a great time as well. Yeah, we sure did. Exactly. It's super easy, fun. You get to be out in nature. I mean, all around, it just feels like Thanksgiving. It does. Mm. This pie is so good. It is absolutely oh, good. Right. Well, we're going to finish our breakfast and get packed up and get out of here. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you at our next camp out. Yes, we will. Remember, keep camping and keep cooking. Yeah. A little bite. I'm gonna just push this down like that. Mm -hmm. No one's the wiser. You're not saying anything. Oh. Okay. Good morning. Oh, come on. Get that out of the way. No, I can't. <laughs> just probing it around. Do you like that, Ducky? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's three bees and parsley in my coffee. <laughs> they got a little too curious. All right. Cut the cameras. All right. Let's get this going. <laughs> All right. Gravy. 
is hot. Good morning, guys. <laughs> That's gonna be a bonus. <laughs> yes, good morning. <laughs> good morning, guys. And a good morning. Well, I can't beat that, man. A couple sausage links, that would have been damn good.